been in churches whereby there's one big personality and everything is revolving around personalities, not around Jesus. I think it's important, you know, to surrender and to say, God, I don't want personality. I want Jesus to be glorified, to be magnified, to be adored, to be exalted. That's why every Tuesday I teach people here, if you have a gift, I'm not a psychic, I'm not a fortune teller, I'm not going to know what a Children of God, we just want no, 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 no. Be 
careful. That's a heathen. That's a sinner thing. Don't be around them. You know, they'll contaminate you. We are called to be in their midst. That's right. We are called to speak to them. We are called to show them, despite what they might be, if we show who Jesus Christ is, they'll bow in the name of Jesus. Amen. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Yes. There's nothing that is bigger than the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen. And if you read the whole entire parable there, you find what the weeds are. As the weeds are pulled up and bent in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. At the end of the age, God will show who he is. Here is something very important when a person experiences the new death. He becomes a member of the invisible church. Now, you know the invisible, the unseen body of Christ that is already in heaven. That means when you kneel down to pray, there's a lot. The children, the selfings, the angels in heaven, they also join in to fight the battle for you. The saints, they also join in. You become a member of the unseen church. There are people that are praying for you right now in India, in Thailand. There are people that are praying for you in Africa. There are people that are praying for you in Bahamas. There are people that are praying for you in Australia, and you don't even know. They are praying for some people in America. As we are praying for people right now in France, as we are praying for people around the world, there are people that are praying. That's what we call the invisible church. You are not alone. You just have to be sensitive. What do you know? What do you think sometimes? You say, my God, the day when I woke up, it was all tested, sour, and nasty. I didn't know how I was going to pull out this one. But all of a sudden, God started working out things. You know how he worked out things for you? It's because someone was interceding. Someone was praying. Someone was just calling, God, I feel this for somebody, but I don't know. Save them in the name of Jesus. And God was doing something. What should a believer then do? A believer number one should seek to identify immediately with a local biblical assembly of believers. As we are assembling here. That's why we're not trying to win souls to come to Home City Church so that we become the biggest church. I, I care less about that. The reason why I'm encouraging you to win souls is not that people, they are delivered. And the, from the kingdom of darkness, like Reinhard Bonk says, we're here to plan the hell and the populate heaven. Amen? Amen? That's what Reinhard Bonk says. We're here to plan the hell and then populate him. <laughs> we have to plan that the kingdom of darkness. Then be involved in an active part of worship. You know, when we come here, we worship God. That's the time, sometimes I don't know where it's me. There's no song that is bad or good. If it's glorifying Jesus, I feel it. Amen? If, it's, if there is Jesus in it, the very moment when we start singing, Oh God, hallelujah! I mean, I don't care, it can be as old as it comes. If there's Jesus in it, I love it. It can be as new as today. If there's Jesus in it, I love it. So, we need to be part of that worship, of that fellowship, of that evangelism, of that Bible study, of that prayer and the fasting. God is calling us to all those things. As we enter them, these are the responsibilities that the Bible teaches us. And in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, not giving up, meaning together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. And the, the more as you see, the day is approaching. We need to understand that the church is primarily the body of what? Christ. And the body of Christ needs to do what Christ desires. What did Jesus Christ do? He went one fisher. He went preached to the lepers. He went, you know, when there was a funeral, he was there. Whatever was happening. You know, the church of today amazes me. You find the church of 30 people have 10 bodyguards. <laughs> Who are they guys? <laughs> Literally, they have 10 bodyguards. They come with, I mean, whom are they guarding? What is it that is so big that they can be guarding? You see, all these things, you know, what about the church of 10 people, everyone is out 
their room so you find these mega churches, they have all these kinds of protocol. You can call, I preached in one church, I said, thank God, I think the pastor didn't like me when I left today. I said, I've been calling your pastor for the longest. I said, if I was going to be calling God, he doesn't answer my phone like that, I'll be in trouble. You call some of these churches, believe me, you can have the personal cell phone number. I'm sorry, leave your message, I'll return your call. You think you will return your call? No call comes back. <laughs> You wait two, three days. My <coughs> sir, I left my message and you didn't. No call comes back. I mean, you keep on saying, what is going on? When the Bible says, before you call, I answer. Thank God for God. The very moment when I call you, he will answer me. Amen. Amen. True. Very true. Very true. true. Yeah. You like that? I love it. <laughs> God bless you. Say, let's cause Jesus to go to the cross. Because of the love of the change. Jesus love of the change. And you and I, we should do the same. We must love Jesus. We must defend the church. We must work on it. We must pay our tithe and offering. Help to advance his kingdom. We must promote holiness in it. Those are things that we need to do. When we go to church, with that kind of an attitude, every Sunday, no one will fail to get back to the church. People that keep on coming. You know, we should not be often taken by minor disagreements of theology and personalities, methods and the motives. Our theme this year is the year of harvest. And if our theme is the year of harvest, it should be in our church to override all these divisive factors. I'm not saying there will never be things that will confuse us, even in the family. There are things that confuse you. You know, to us who are married, there are times when we differ with our spouses, but we don't divorce every day we differ. Differences makes us to be strong. If every day when you differ with your husband or wife, you divorce, believe me, I don't know how many women have been married, or how many men people would have been married. But every difference makes you to grow strong. In closing, I want to say this. Many years ago, a farmer had an unusual fine crop of wheat. Just a few days before the wheat was to be harvested, a terrible hell and a windstorm came. The entire crop was destroyed went out on the porch. The little boy looked at what was formerly a beautiful field of wheat. And then, with tears in his eyes, he looked up at his father, expecting to hear waves of despair. All at once, his father started singing softly, lock of ages, craved for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the bride from thy wounded side which fraud be of sin the double cure, save from the wrath and make me cheer. When you hide yourself, when the storm of life are blowing, you can separate sin the soul. Indeed, I hide myself in the lock of it. While we are excited about getting the harvest field, it should be a reminder to us that indeed we can seek and save those which are lost. We want to see those which are lost to save. I want to see people added to this house. But they will not be added because we tell them how beautiful Home City Church is and how loving people we are. You can tell them all day long we are the church of love. But if you don't tell, you don't pray for them, it will never happen. You need to get down and pray for these people. You can tell them all the best messages that you have ever heard from them. It will not help. I encourage each and everybody in this day. As you go back home, I want you to 
for this past seven days before we come next week. Write a name of someone. Don't write many people. A name of someone. Pray for that person. Earnestly and seriously. Pray for them. Maybe miss a meal, miss lunch, or miss something. And just faithfully get down on your knees and do that. And you see what's going on. The large of people will never be the same. I've never seen a habit that can never be changed. The reason why habits are never changed is that because we don't pray, we only talk about habits. And I want to pray for someone, regardless of what it is. Come on, man. Drugs, okay? Alcohol. I will change all that. Is there anyone today who say, Pastor, we in the will of God? That is that to come so close to you. time even to forgive when a person wrongs me. I can't forgive them. This is the day when you can come and confess. I'm not putting you on the spot. I'm just saying, if we confess our faults to one another, it's fair and just. Maybe you may say, all oh, this, I don't even understand what it is. All what I want is to be so near the close to God. I say every head bowed down, or eyes closed. I just want you to slip your hand and raise it. Your head, or eyes closed. You say, preacher, it's me. This message that you're preaching, it's me. I encourage you to raise your hand. I see that a hand there. Thank you. Is there anybody else? I see that a hand there. Thank you. You know, I don't want anyone to come in front today. I want to pray for you wherever you are. It's between you and that's why I'm saying every eye is closed. You have a hard time to get into grips with something. God will see you by raising your hand. Just raise your hand. Maybe you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal sin. Or you know you're struggling with it, an issue and you want God to deliver you. Just raise your hand. If there's anything that you're struggling with, just raise your hand. I see that hand there. Thank you for it down. Thank you. Anyone else? I see that hand there. God is, is doing something. I, I, I'm, I'm telling you today, God is going to be performing miracles without you even walking in front. You'll be amazed that when you get back home, you say, this thing that has been holding me is broken. It's broken. I sense that I need because God is breaking things right now in the confine. You, you know there's something. I, before I pray, I want to give you one more chance. I still feel that there's about three more people here that just needs to make it right with God. We have those hands. I truly feel that three more people. God wants to help you. Don't be ashamed. The Bible says, don't be ashamed. Every eye is closed here. God wants to be with you. Don't go back home. Don't take
there's something that makes me to be afraid. I'm not bold. I don't know what is the right way to say. Every eye is closed. You say, I need to start speaking to people about Jesus. And I want him careful to help me. I want to bring him some perfume. I want to bring him the gift. I want to honor him. I want to see souls saved. Please raise your hand wherever you are. Thank you. I see hands raised here and everywhere. Thank you. Is there anybody else? You said, thank you. I see that hand there. Anyone else? Thank you. I see that hand there. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm, I'm making the last call. You say, Jesus, I need you. I want you to use me. I want to use me. I want to have the right way. To be amazed how God will use you. And how God will bless you. Of every soul that you win. Of every soul that you win. There's going to be a blessing. Hallelujah. All those who raise your hands. Because you want God to use you in winning souls for wisdom. Just stretch your hands high. Just lift to your head. Now, God is releasing the wisdom now. He's releasing the wisdom. How you speak to the people. Father, in the name of Jesus, I plead in the blood of Jesus that you give them the courage. You give them the boldness. You give them the revelation. When they open their mouth, that of God, there will be nothing to be afraid. They will not compromise. You give them the ancient, the sin.